So, I took the Xiaomi 14 with me to Barcelona while attending MWC to test how good of a phone it is, but also mainly to capture the beautiful streets of Barcelona and attractions from Mobile World Congress. Now, while I could say its cameras impressed me a lot, I can't really say if it is because this is the first Xiaomi flagship phone I've handled or the cameras are actually just so good. There were cases where I preferred what I was getting from the Xiaomi 14 over my S24 Ultra. Surprising, right? But is this the perfect compact phone? The Xiaomi 14 is the first flagship Xiaomi phone I've used. The closest was the 13T from last year. I've mostly been handling the Redmi series. Now, as far as compact smartphones go, this is probably a top contender for the best you can spend money on. At 6.3 inches, it joins the likes of Samsung S24, Google Pixel 8, and the iPhone 15 as flagship offerings in smaller form factor. It's actually funny I'm calling this 6.3 inches phone compact, but that's where we are right now. And I still believe not everyone wants a plus or ultra sized phone. For pricing, the Xiaomi 14 has a launch price of about 1000 euros, but you can get it on AliExpress for under 800 dollars, which is a really good deal. And it's the global version. You could probably also consider a Galaxy S24 base version for around similar price or a Pixel 8 Pro. But the Xiaomi 14 offers more than just a flagship phone in a compact body. Now, one feature I found so interesting aside the fact that it can shoot log videos, it has an inbuilt teleprompter. So, if you're a creator that relies on your smartphone for content, the Xiaomi 14 it's a complete package, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. We'll talk more about these cameras later because it is quite packed. There's a Pro and Ultra version of the Xiaomi 14 series all running on the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor. This is one of the very few flagship phones you can purchase and still get the essential accessories in the box, including a protective casing. But this phone is so fine, I won't want to use it with a case. It's risky, I know, but it just feels great. I got the white one, which is glossy. There are other colors which also have the same glossy finish on the rear, except for the black one that I think has a matte finish. The frame is aluminum. It's glossy, so it's prone to smudges. The back glass is also a smudge magnet, but with the white, it's not too visible. Now, I can't confirm if we have Gorilla Glass Victors on the back, but that's what we have protecting this super bright OLED display. The infrared blaster on the Xiaomi 14 is not placed on the top frame like we have with previous Xiaomi phones. This time the sensor is hidden within the camera bomb. So to use it, instead of pointing it like a remote, you hold it up as if you want to take a picture. Not the most practical, but as long as it works, it's good for me. It's better to have it there than to get rid of it completely. Now while the frame here is flat, I love the subtle curve on the back glass. So it's not a completely flat build like the iPhone or Samsung's. The silver part of the camera bump is roughly textured on one side. Not exactly something noteworthy, but sometimes I just find myself running my fingers around the edge. It feels nice. The speakers on the Xiaomi 14 sound great. It's right up there with the best on any smartphone I've used. The sound is rich with barely any distortion at high volumes. Combine that with this vibrant OLED display and you have great media experience. The display has support for HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. The bezels are symmetrical and it's one of the brightest displays on a smartphone when viewing HDR content, with as much as 3000 nits of peak brightness. In usage outdoors however, it's not as bright as the S24 which can reach 1600 nits in high brightness. This reaches between 1000 and 1200 nits which is also great, it's never a problem using it outdoors on a bright sunny day. It has a display resolution of 1200 by 2670 I believe that should be a 1.5K display. The Xiaomi 14 is one of the smoothest phones to operate and you could partly attribute that to the 120Hz variable refresh rate and Xiaomi's new HyperOS. It is really smooth, like iOS level smooth with its animations. I love the new look of HyperOS and the fact that it's lightweight when you compare it to most Android skins, but it tries too hard to mimic iOS which is not exactly a bad thing, I love the whole UI feel, but you don't have to also mimic some of the bad habits from iOS. Now tell me why I swiped at my control center to access my settings and it's no longer there. I have to go look for the settings app just like it is with iOS. Now that's not really a deal breaker but it's just one of those little things you use on a daily and don't really think about its importance until it's suddenly gone. Also manually checking for software updates isn't as clear, you don't see anything describing it or a button to click. I was trying to look for where to find software updates with no success until I accidentally tapped this and it was searching for updates. Also it's not really a deal breaker but used to be simpler or maybe I'm just too much of a noob to figure out this simpler way. Moving on, lock screen customization. I love Xiaomi's implementation and all the extra options you get. HyperOS still brings over a MIUI bad habits I really didn't expect to see on a Xiaomi flagship. Now, I'm not sure if I should call them ads, but they definitely fall under the category of unsolicited notifications. I've never opened the theme app, but I keep getting notifications. 
That aside, I love the improvements to the UI. Xiaomi has promised 4 years of OS upgrades for their flagship, so you should receive support up to 118 for the Xiaomi 14. Not as much as Samsung or Google which promised 7 years, but 4 years is pretty decent. There are 3 RAM options for the Xiaomi 14, 8, 12 and 16 gigs with either 256 or 512 gigs of internal storage, UFS 4.0, there is no SD card slot, typical flagship attributes. The version I have here is the one with 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. I doubt this 16 gig version is available globally, but you can probably still get your hands on it if you look carefully. For a 6.3 inches display phone, while this is not the perfect definition of compact, it is the closest since compact smartphones are actually dying up. It is lovely to hold in the hands and is great for one-handed operation. It's not too small, nor too big. More like a perfect size smartphone for someone with regular sized hands, like me regular size. Now let's talk performance expectations from an Agent 3 powered smartphone. The Snapdragon Agent 3 is currently the best flagship processor available and it powers the Xiaomi 14 just fine. You can have all the expectations as far as flagship performance is concerned. I've occasionally experienced the device get really hot when doing demanding stuff like using the camera for long periods of filming or playing graphics intensive games. I downloaded the new Call of Duty Warzone mobile and it works fine here, able to play at high graphics settings consistently at I think max frame rates. However, it runs hot, like really hot. Now it might be largely due to the fact that Warzone mobile is a really demanding game which is still undergoing optimization. But the Xiaomi 14 has better heat management on less demanding games. Now, Xiaomi has managed to pack a 4060mAh battery on this phone and correct me if I'm wrong, that is probably the most battery on any compact flagship phone. And it has the impressive battery life to back it up. I use this the most while in Barcelona attending MWC and I found the battery life reliable, lasting me through a whole day even when I was mostly using the cameras. I never really had to plug it in overnight when I needed to charge and that is thanks to its 90W fast charging. I could plug it in while I was preparing to go out and within 30 minutes, I have a full battery. Or if it is fully drained, I can get a full charge in less than 15 minutes. And unlike most flagships, the 90 watts charging brick comes in the box. It also retains the 50 watts wireless charging from the Xiaomi 13 and 10 watts reverse wireless charging. Now let's talk about the cameras proper. You've probably noticed some of the samples I showed at different parts of this video and it gives you an idea of what quality to expect mostly from its rear cameras. Xiaomi has partnered with Leica just we had with the previous generation, but this time we have a triple rear configuration of 50 megapixel cameras each, a wide, a telephoto lens with 3.2x optical zoom and an ultra wide. Selfie camera gets a 32 megapixel lens. The photos from the rear cameras are right up there with the best flagship phones. You can choose between Leica Vibrant and Authentic for your photos. I shot mostly with Leica Authentic and the results were great. I had it side by side with my S24 Ultra and on some shots I preferred the one from the Xiaomi 14. The selfie camera does great but I had to first disable the default beauty filter. Then I got sharper results, even with portraits, although not the best in edge detection. The Xiaomi 14 can shoot 8K videos at 24 frames per second from the rear camera. You also get 4K 30 or 4K 60 with both selfie and rear cameras. When you switch to Pro Mode, you are able to shoot videos in log format. You can only shoot Pro Mode from the rear camera. It also allows you to shoot up to 8K in Pro Mode. When shooting log, you can import your own lots or apply Rex 709. Now this is something for professionals though, I doubt the average user will know what to do with these features. But the bottom line remains that as a creator or filmmaker, the Xiaomi 14 is packed with all the features you need to get the best out of a smartphone's camera within the default camera app. And let's not forget the teleprompter feature which is accessible when using the selfie camera for video. You can add your script and use it while filming yourself. No worries about memorizing it or doing so many takes. It has a quad mic setup for capturing better audio when recording videos. I believe two at the bottom and two at the back. So I'm checking out how the Xiaomi 14 will handle selfie videos, especially when I'm sitting with the light source behind me. You see the sun is right back there. So like how it's going to do with HDR and you, you know the rest of the story, right? It's best to actually shoot this way and get the best quality. But then the best of the best, right, are able to handle it, so what do you guys think? The Xiaomi 14 is one of the best value compact smartphones. It is not lacking in performance, although I think it could do with better heat management when pushed to its limits. It also packs quite the camera features if you know how to take advantage of it. Other options for compact flagship smartphones you can consider are the iPhone 15 if you like iOS, or the Pixel 8 which costs less but has longer software support and it does not pack as much in terms of hardware or processor performance compared to this. This is the Tensor G3 while this has the Snapdragon Agent 3. Or you can also consider the Galaxy S24 which is it's more globally available but might cost more than the Xiaomi 14. That's all from me on the Xiaomi 14.